get you out of my mind It's like I feel it for the first time Been thinking about you all night I've been searching for this all my life You're just my type I've been looking for a boy who can treat me right But your dark hair with those eyes so bright They look into my soul and it sparks my life Can I take you there? about yourself? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone. Today I'm joined by a guest, which is my dad. So this is my dad. <laughs> and um, we're going to be talking a little bit about heart surgery because my dad went through heart surgery last year. It's kind of like a little bit of an interview. It should be a good time. Take me back to last year when you were first told that you were going to need to have heart surgery. What was that like? Well, it was a pretty scary sort of uh, prospect of thinking they're going to have to go under the knife. Yeah. But however, the uh, alternative wasn't very good either. Because obviously doing nothing, I wouldn't be here today. Yeah. And so, what did they tell you was wrong and why you needed to have the surgery? Uh, they said that I had a aorta stenosis. And it would involve open heart surgery. So initially, they said that the surgery would happen a little later on, but then the process was sped up. So why was that sped up? On a couple of occasions, just about hit the floor, so to speak. Yeah. So basically, what Dad was experiencing was arrhythmias. So that's when your heart skips a beat. And so when that happened, what did that feel like? Oh, just a little odd. I, I guess it was, um, I guess it's sort of like a little bit like being a little bit woozy or you feel like you're going to black out, but you don't quite mm -hmm. black out. Yeah. yeah. You were told that the surgery would be pretty much happening right away. Uh, yeah, well, the reason why that occurred is because one day I possibly did a little bit too much and I was walking down a, a country lane and felt like someone smacked me in the back of the head with a sledgehammer and got a shock through from the base of my skull out through my tailbone and that almost put me on the floor and that was that was very very scary so end up having an electric cardiograph and they brought the surgery forward probably 10 to 12 days I think. Right. When you were told that you were going to have the surgery done what was going through your mind? Oh that's, that's a real tough one. Uh, I suppose a little bit uh, apprehensive about uh, going through the surgery, sort of thinking that um, you really haven't got a choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sort of really hard to explain, but you're sort of just, I guess, resigned to the fact that you're going to have this operation and you hope at the end of the end of the day that you come out of it um, reborn. Yeah. Another chance. Yeah, that's right. So basically, Dad had an aortic stenosis, which is a narrowing of the aorta, and what they did to fix it or make it better is uh, essentially they gave him a new valve. And when you are told you have this surgery, you can opt for a mechanical valve or a sort of a natural tissue valve. That's right, isn't it? That's correct, yeah. But Dad has yeah. a mechanical valve. The only drawback is being on warfarin for life. And warfarin is a blood thinner, basically. So something that Dad has to be careful of is to make sure that his blood is the right kind of thickness. How much warfarin do you take? Uh, currently, it's 7 milligrams a day. Would you say, though, that it's fairly straightforward to take warfarin and doesn't affect you too much? Or? No, no, I, I, I sort of feel that it's just, yeah, it's, it's no big drama. That's good. Just over a year after you've had your surgery now, yeah. How do you feel now that you have a new valve? Since operation, uh, it's been really good. Uh, I've sort of been pretty proactive in my physical endeavours, uh, playing badminton, aerobics, weight training, and doing a lot of cycling now in the summer months. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. Um, I will say that Dad's pretty humble in the fact that he actually does a lot of exercise and does take care of himself really well. So I think something that helps people in general, but also after heart surgery, is if you are on top of your nutrition and your exercise, but also that if you suspect that something is wrong, 
with any part of your body that you feel like you can go to the doctor and feel comfortable about checking that kind of thing out because I think dad's always been really good at going to the doctor if he thinks something's wrong. How big is your incision mark from the surgery? Sort of uh, just below the... Oh, yeah. this, the top of the sternum? Yeah, down to, obviously down to, down to the... Down to the, basically the end of the sternum, yeah. so it goes right along the sternum. Yeah. Might include a picture of that. <laughs> yeah. um, and the other thing which I noticed after the surgery was that there's a slight ticking noise. And that's just the mechanical valve just closing, basically. But does that bother you? No, not really. Bring the camera closer, if you don't mind, so that people can hear what it sounds like. Yeah, if you want. What would you say to someone that's, you know, faced with the same prospect of having a similar heart surgery to you? What oh, do you I, have think, to I, say? Think, I think it's just words of encouragement is just get out there and get it done. Uh, leaving family behind, I guess, is a little bit of a worry, and um, your health is pretty important, so <clears throat> it's no big drama to get it done, and I'm sort of living proof uh, 12, 18 months down the track that uh, leading a perfectly normal life. Just about to get up and swing on the chainsaw again, cutting firewood, not an issue. That's right. So thanks for tuning in and watching another video from me and thanks to my dad for joining me in this video and I'll catch you next time. Bye! Can I take you there? Can I take you there?